Hey, what's up guys? Joker here and I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to bring you a video that is fairly exciting for me uh, to kind of talk about a piece of software that I actually only discovered fairly recently. Actually, when I was just getting into my testing of the RTX 3080, this is a benchmarking tool which is by far the best benchmarking tool I have ever found. And this is not a sponsored video. Uh, I have absolutely zero affiliation uh, with the creators of this software. It was something that I actually found because I was having difficulty with my previous software, which was OCAT, which I would use to capture uh, average frame rates, 1% lows, and all that other data that we use in benchmarking videos. So I know this is probably going to appeal to a very small number of you out there, but I really appreciated this software so much and how easy it made testing on the RTX 3080 and other cards. Um, and then I'll definitely be using it uh, moving ahead in the future because I have never seen anything that even remotely comes close to what Cap Frame X is able to do. But first, today's video is brought to you by MMORC.com, where you could save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro, which you can get for just $15, as well as Office 2019 Pro and Office 365. And if you act right now, you can get an additional 27% off with my code JOK27 at checkout, and that'll knock the price down on Windows 10 Pro from $15.29 all the way down to $11.16. And of course, they accept a wide variety of payment from PayPal to credit cards to Bitcoin. So be sure to act now and hit up the links down in the description below. So that is the name of the software Cap Frame X. In the past, I have used things like Fraps, which was really great for its time, but it hasn't received an update in I don't know how many years. Uh, it's still actually very good if you're testing only DirectX 11 games. The problem is it doesn't have any support for DirectX 12 or Vulkan, which are now modern APIs and uh, more and more apparent in pretty much every game, every AAA title that comes out. So after Fraps, there was OCAT, which, you know, would work in DirectX 12 and Vulcan games, but it still continues to have a lot of issues. At least for me, uh, there'd be a lot of times where I would load up a game and it just, for whatever reason, wouldn't hook in. The overlay would almost never work. And there'd be times where I would run a benchmark run for a few minutes, you know, hit my key to start the benchmark logging. And when it was done, hit it again. And then I'd come out and there'd be absolutely no log file whatsoever and it was like a problem that I just couldn't fix there's not there wasn't a whole lot of information out there on the web to be able to address that stuff and it was an issue like that that actually led me to find cap frame x about a week and a half ago when I was starting my testing on the 3080 by complete accident so um, this is the website right here if you are interested in benchmarking games for either for YouTube reviews or just for your own personal interest um, for testing out a, a, a new system or a new hardware upgrade, like if you've got one of the new RTX 30 series graphics cards, this thing is going to be a complete and utter godsend. All right, so if you want to get it, you can grab it on their website, capframex.com, right here. They have the download button. It's completely safe. Uh, it works with Riva Tuner statistics. So if you're familiar with that through something like MSI Afterburner for your overlay, overlays, it works with that as well, so you can actually use the overlay of Cap Frame X uh, to display information like you would maybe use in something like Afterburner. So if you wanted to monitor, you know, the different CPU core usages, GPU usage temperatures, so on and so forth, it does all of that as well as illustrate to you when you are actually logging uh, frame rates and frame times uh, in the software, which we'll get all into uh, in just a minute. But if you want to grab the software, it's on there, or they also have their older releases uh, over on GitHub, which you can get as well. I'll have links to both of these uh, down in the description below. But you should, for most most reasons, you should be on the latest version, which is currently 1.5.5 beta. Uh, and the oldest release goes all the way back to January 6th of 2019. So the software is just over a year old, and it's been getting a lot of fairly frequent updates every couple of weeks to a month. Seems like there is a new revision with new features and stuff added to it. And the original version kind of just really seemed like it was an analysis tool for log files from OCAP, but I haven't tried the uh, original version, so I'm not really too sure how many of the current features were featured all the way back then. But right now, it's really impressive. So 
we're gonna go ahead and jump into the software. This is the Cap Frame X software right here, which has a very clean, sort of minimalist inf uh, interface, but it's got tons of information uh, that you can derive from using this tool. Way more information than honestly uh, I could have ever expected to get from something like OCAT. Um, yes, there was a lot of things like, 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 for instance, like testing sensors for uh, wattage pull on your GPU, CPU temperatures, all of that kind of stuff. You could get all of that information um, and, you know, test it with something like GPU-Z or CPU-Z and, you know, other, other softwares like that. But this kind of takes the work of like two or three programs and then puts it all into one and then somehow does it better. Uh, so yeah, this is just the, the interface when you first open it up, the capture section here, you can see all of the benchmarks um, that I've recently logged uh, on my system here with the RTX 3080 sitting right here on the left side. So these are just your log files. Uh, you could delete these or export these on a USB, or they even have a cloud functionality on the software. So if you want to create an account and use it like that, you can do that as well. Um, but I tend to just kind of keep my files local and transfer them from a USB from one system to the other. Um, it's just the way I've always done it, kind of old school. Um, but yeah, when you're benchmarking a game, you basically just need to have this running in the background. And then when you want to start a benchmark, you hit your capture hotkey, which for me, I set to F8. By default, I believe it was F11, uh, but I set it to F8 just personal preference for whatever reason, uh, because that's what I was using on OCAT and I just wanted to keep it the same. So I set it to F8, but you can set it to whatever you want, uh, honestly. You can also change things like the capture time, how long it's going to run zero being no limit, which means you would need to interact with it. So you would start the benchmark with F8. And then when the benchmark is over, you would hit F8 once again. You also have the option to log your sensors for things like temperatures, which I would definitely uh, recommend doing. And if you have this, you know, running on, if you have a secondary monitor, that's going to be great because you'll be able to see that it's started. Or if you use the overlay, which is something you can utilize uh, if you want to, I haven't really gotten to using it too much yet, uh, but it definitely conveys a lot of a lot of very useful information. It's just stuff that I typically have set up through uh, MSI Afterburner, so that's the way that I've kept it for now. But I may switch over to using theirs uh, exclusively in the future because it is very nice that their overlay actually works, unlike OCAT, and it does tell you when you've begun capturing. Although I typically have a second monitor going any uh, going anyway, so it's not really something that I have necessarily needed to see but it's, it's, it's helpful nonetheless. So if you want to use it, you can. You can toggle it with either a hotkey or you can just go ahead and put it on in the software. And of course, if you put it on in the software, you can change what information you have included in there. You can change the names of the different lines in there. You could change the, the colors, the layout, um, you know, pretty much you name it. Anything that you want to see conveyed in that overlay um, that would work through Revatuner Reva statistics, you can customize within the Cap Frame X software. So very nice, very useful feature to have. Uh, you could definitely utilize something like this as opposed to MSI Afterburner or Reva Tuner uh, if you wanted to go ahead and use this instead. Now, when you've actually run a benchmark on a game, as I said, you get these log files, but they're pretty much like impossible to read. So it's got a built-in analysis tool, which is hugely, hugely beneficial. I recently was doing some tests with uh, Port Royal testing on overclocking and stuff like that. So I'll just go ahead and pick a random uh, one of these. I believe this was the first run that I did. No, I could see the times on here. So this was the first run that I did. Um, so this was on the RTX 3080 with absolutely no overclock whatsoever, just completely stock setting. And as you could see, we've got a nice graph here that kind of shows me the frame times where those were. I got my average as well as my 1% lows down here but I can actually change what I have in here. If I wanted to add more stuff, I totally could. I can come into here and I could set the minimum, if I wanted to see the minimum frame rates, 5% uh, percentile, median, 99 percentile, maximum frame rates. All of that stuff could easily put on, be put on and then I could go ahead uh, and apply that and it would convey that within the software as well. But the information I'm mainly interested in is average frame rate, and 1% low, so that's all that I have it set uh, to show in here. Now you also in here you have for that given benchmark run, so for this particular run that I did on Port Royal or for whatever game, if it was Assassin's Creed Odyssey, let's say, uh, I could also come over here to my sensor statistics, which would mean it would have all of this information that was logged during that benchmark run. So you could see that on a, a benchmark run of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I believe this was uh, ultra-wide testing, uh, yeah, this was, 
yeah, I believe this was ultra wide from my test system, and then I brought the files over to here. Um, this was, so you can see the CPU load, the maximum was 97%. That was probably like loading in. But on average during that benchmark run, it was at 60% uh, CPU load. You could see the power uh, draw on the CPU, max at 107, average of 81. You can see the CPU temperatures. We can see the GPU load as well as the GPU power. So this was for, uh, this was actually for the 2080 Ti. Uh, so this was 256 watts. It's showing us all this information uh, over here on the left side. You can see it was an 8700K, 2080 Ti, 16 gigs of RAM at 3200 megahertz. Uh, and this was, G this was GPU clock was average at 1863. GPU power was 256. Uh, if I switch over to one of my Port Royal runs, I know this was on a 3080, which is again... Uh, conveyed on here. You can see the GPU power has uh, jumped up quite a bit. This was actually overclocking uh, on the RTX 3080, so that's why the power wattage is higher. If I go down to my non-overclock, you'll see that the average GPU power is 319 watts. So there, that should just really show you right there um, the type of information I can go ahead and I can get from this. So from an overclocked run to a non-overclocked run, I just learned that my power wattage jumped by about 60 watts. That's extremely valuable information that previously I would probably have to use something like GPU Z. So it would have to be a, another piece of software that I would need to have running in the background on top of something like Afterburner and OCAT, which would be benchmarking it. Whereas instead I can have this one piece of software and it gives me everything. The frame rates, the frame times, every single component in the system is basically being benchmarked and all of that information is being logged and then easily readable with basically zero effort on my part. I just need to have the program running in the background and hit F8 and I have everything. It's fantastic. I don't know if, it's, if I'm conveying it well enough how much how exciting this is to someone like me uh, that does this kind of stuff all the time, but it is incredible. And this is only just scratching the surface. There was I keep finding every day another f feature uh, in this software. So I'm probably not even going to be able to get to cover everything today, but I find stuff every day that I like in this. Um, so you can aggregate your statistics if you want. You can do comparisons, which is awesome. This thing can build you fucking graphs. So like I said before, I was benchmarking 3D P Mark Port Royal, so I could easily take a file from here. This was my stock settings, uh, just no overclock whatsoever on the 3080. And you know, this type of benchmark usually gives you a score uh, at the end. But if I wanted to get frame rates, average FPS 1% low, all that kind of stuff, I can go ahead and get that right here. And then if I wanted to say, okay, well, this was, I remember this was no overclock. And then I tried just bumping up the power limit slider uh, to see how much of an impact that would have. So here's this run right here. And you could see I jumped from 52.3 frames per second to 52.4. So obviously not that huge. I got another run here. That went up to 53.4. I believe that was adding on a 50 megahertz overclock. Um, then I did another one here where I believe I bumped up the memory to 500 megahertz. Um, so yeah, I've got all these different, I've all, I have all this stuff noted down. So if I was doing a video on it, uh, I would have all of that stuff to be able to provide to you guys. But you could see how easy it is for me to just go ahead and drag and drop all of these files in here. And then I have a graph here, which if I wanted to, I could just screenshot that and stick it right into a video. Like, pretty, that's pretty much how easy it would be. Now, I still go and do my own custom graphs and stuff like that in Google Drive, um, but just as easily, I could have utilized these graphs right here, which CapFrameX has made for me in, like, literally five seconds. That saves you a bunch of time. I would say making graphs probably takes me a good 30 minutes to an hour for uh, a given video, so that's a ton of work I could have removed if I wanted to go ahead uh, and utilize their graphs, and that's something that I definitely could do if I want to. I could set custom titles and all that stuff, change things around, uh, change the groupings on stuff. So you could, like this, it, it, it's, it does so much. It like, like I said, I'm really just scratching the surface here. This is something I just found today. Didn't, wasn't even really paying attention to it, but it lags in, it, it benchmarks input lag on the system as well. And it's got cloud so you can upload all of your statistics if you want to easily transfer it from a test bench, let's say, over to another system where maybe you'll be editing together a video or writing an article or something. So I know this is kind of a lot of information, but I just really wanted to illustrate this uh, for you guys because this is going to save me so much time uh, moving ahead in the future. And I really felt like CapFrame X deserved uh, the notoriety and the attention for their software because even though this may be uh, only really useful to a 
small section of people out there, for the people that it is useful for, it is going to just, uh, it's immeasurable how much time this is going to save me and how much easier uh, it makes benchmarking games, new titles that come out, graphics cards, hardware, any type of hardware, CPUs, whatever, uh, all of the information that I can get is not only going to be able to give me more information to provide you guys at the end of the day, but it would make it infinitely easier for me, and I'll probably be able to give you guys information that I might not have otherwise maybe gone out of my way to go ahead and get, because it would have been so much uh, extra work, you know, to go out and get something like that with the wattages and all of that kind of stuff and input lag on the system. Like, are you kidding me? It has everything I could have ever wanted in a piece of benchmarking software and then some, and it still has stuff that I'm continuing to find today, and I'm sure they'll be adding even more features uh, in the future. I even hear uh, from their Twitter account that there is a dark mode possibly in the works, so that's something I will appreciate as well uh, if and when it comes out, but honestly, the color scheme and the layout and everything like right now is pretty darn perfect. A dark mode would be the cherry on top for Cap Frame X, so please, if you want to benchmark anything on your PC, Use Cap Frame X. Don't mess around with Fraps or OCAT or anything else. Just get this. It's free. It costs you absolutely nothing. And it's amazing. I would easily pay uh, money for this. Although I hope they don't try to charge me. Um, but, <laughs> but I would easily pay for uh, a program that is this useful. Um, it's, it's, it's awesome. Uh, it's really great. And it made 3080 testing so much easier for me. So... Uh, that's all I've got for you guys today on Cap Frame X. I hope, hopefully, you guys found this uh, video informative in some way, especially if you're a reviewer out there and maybe you've been kind of banging your head against the wall as to what type of software you could use to uh, get the information that you wanted to give it to people. Maybe you're starting out on stuff like that with benchmarking, you didn't know where to go. Hopefully, you saw this video and it's helped you out immensely as much as Cap Frame X has helped me out in the past couple of weeks with the 30 series launch. So I'm going to go now. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave a thumbs up on it. Subscribe if you're not already. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about Cap Frame X. And I'll see you all later for another video. Tara.